This is Coon Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's fight week. We're in Leeds. I'm delighted to be joined by Miss Ebony Bridges. Yes, we are. You're always delighted to see me. And I know you missed me because it's been, you know, a few weeks now. So, yeah. You missing me? Three weeks. You, you think a lot of yourself, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's good to be back, honestly. I love the quick turnarounds. Okay, and also an old IFL favourite, Mr Enzo Macronelli. We did half an hour earlier on. We don't know which one's actually going to go out first, but Enzo, thank you again for joining me. Anything for the cool, you know, Ahmed? Absolutely. I feel like this is a bit of a weird position. I feel like I need to get a chair. Could you keep the people entertained amongst yourselves to the camera while I go and get a chair? Yes, sure. Guys, just in case you didn't know, I'm fighting. <laughs> <laughs> September 4th, fucking Coogan, this guy. Look, mate, your mate. I know you guys all tune in to watch Coogan, but no, honestly. Um, thanks for all the love, guys. I see all the love on my on the videos, all the comments. Keep bannering, keep supporting me. I really do appreciate it. Um, and um, yeah, appreciate you guys. Are we ready for this weekend? And here he is. He's got the stool. Yeah, was that good? Okay, maybe I should. Okay, Enzo, is your first time here um, in in Leeds for a fight? Uh, as a pro, yes. <laughs> as a pro, boxer, as an boxer, as an amateur, <laughs> three times, three wins, three knockouts. So, oh. uh, see, so hopefully he gives me that same luck. Okay, Coogan, back to you. Back to you, the studio. <laughs> It was recording. <laughs> so I don't know what you said. I've got to check it, though. Right. <coughs> this is a bit of a random combination. Ebony Bridges and Enzo Macronelli. So how did this story start, Enzo? Well, to be honest, I mean, I mean, we've been speaking for two years on, on yeah. Twitter. Is like, I think I mentioned earlier, if I was up watching the boxing at 5 o'clock in the morning, I put a little tweet out about a fight, and the first person to come to answer me was Ebony, and we started talking through the boxing side of things. Um, and obviously she had a fight four weeks ago, uh, well, yeah, four weeks ago now. Uh, won her out back into the States, so I had a phone call off um, uh, an advisor of Ebony's. Would I be interested in looking after for three weeks while she's here? Um, I seen her fight with Shannon Courtney, I seen her fight with Beck Connolly, I seen the improvements. And yeah, it was a no-brainer. Uh, I've always wanted to get involved with the, the pro boxing, uh, and you know, this was my first start. Do you want to add to that? Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. You know, I was happy. Um, I, mean, I talked to my team about it. Um, we all love en Enzo, how he fights, his, his style, and um, you know, we we know each other. You know, it's not like I'm going to some gym that I haven't got a, any kind of friendship with or anything. And the good thing was, um, you know, Enzo is willing to work with my team. You know, so because pretty much I had to just come here and just keep everything going, the momentum going. We didn't want anyone that was too different to what I'm like or know, knows as well how my boxing is, you know, and Enzo's, like he said, he's watched my fights, you know, I've sent him sparring, I've sent him things. So he knows how um, I fight, he knows my style. So it was just good and, you know, plus Wales, you know, like I have places to stay in Wales. So it just worked out really, really well. So it just, everything was, yeah, perfect for this. Basically, you just needed somewhere to stay in Wales. No, that sounded really bad. No, pretty much, mate. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> nah. no, I didn't but I didn't stay. No, I didn't even stay with him. But I, like, so I mean, like, I, obviously, accommodation is easier for me. Thanks. <laughs> Do you know you have got your own banter? That's kind of yeah, yeah, our banter. It's all right. Didn't mean it. Chill. It's cool. <laughs> um, speaking to Enzo earlier, we spoke for quite a considerable amount of time about yourself. A um, couple of idiotic things you've come up with as well. Cool as well, Jake Paul fighting for the world title. I'm, yeah, hold on, you're, you're ruining, you're ruining <laughs> the whole interview now. I don't know, you're, no, you're ruining our interview because we had quite a good discussion on it. So I was talking about, what were you talking about, Ebony? You're looking bigger than me now at the moment, so I'm not big chair, so my apologies, Cool. It doesn't matter if I'm bigger or not, Enzo, I know what would happen, obviously. Um, but um, he said, obviously, before you did some sparring uh, down at the gym, kind of. You kind of prepped the boys beforehand, etc. But then the feedback you got after that was, well, actually, <laughs> this girl can really fight. Yeah, it was basically I had, she's, her first couple of spars with a couple of bike boys from the gym. Um, and I spoke to the boys, said, put it on her, you know, but remember, she's a girl. I said, but be careful, she can whack. And they all, they all sort of thought, oh, she's a girl, she can't whack her. Lad. But literally, straight after, phoned me in the night, they said, fuck me, and she can whack. Like, and, you know, she, she boxed well and she's been sparring well and um, just she's getting better and better and sort of just 
added on from the Beck Connolly fight. I mean, it is very misleading about you. I think if people kind of just kind of look at you and but people that know you and the kind of even people in the UK that have seen you fight now, they can't kind of dispute the fact whether you can fight or not. But I think it is probably misleading if you haven't seen your fight to think otherwise. Yeah, I think that as well. And I think, you know, you can say I'm strong, but it's a bit different. I think it's different. Like, they still don't expect me to be have the power that I have, even though they know that you hear that I'm strong. I think they still don't really expect it. Like, even, you know, I spied Chantal and Cameron, and she keeps sending me messages about how impressed she was, and she can't believe how tough and how strong I am. Like, you know, like people, they know it, but it's, you know, I think it feels different, um, you know, obviously seeing the sparring or being on the other end of it, because um, it's maybe not as exactly what you expect. So, yeah. So, in your opinion, how far does Ebony Bridges go? She can go a very long way. Um, like I said earlier, not being chauvinist, but I've never seen a girl work like that. Before I told her on the thing, I've never seen a girl uh, willing to learn, uh, willing to, not so much question everything. Girl or boy as well? Or is it just girls? You never All seen right. a girl. I never seen. I just know to be, see what I mean. Close, <laughs> we were talking about this earlier on. How you can't make a comment like that anymore because people are going to take it the wrong way. Right. So I've never seen a girl work as hard as a boy. Okay, yeah, so we get we get that. She works hard. Uh, she has a, she has <laughs> she has a willingness to learn. And what she does, if you if you give her an instruction, if you give her something to do, she questions. She wants to know why. Uh, she wants to know the mechanics, and that that stands you in good stead. <laughs> but why are you laughing at that? Yeah. Because I think I'm a pain in the ass. Because I'm always because because I do like I, obviously I love learning and I want to know I want to know everything and I want to understand everything. I need to know the mechanics. I, I want to know I'm maybe a little bit OCD. Like do you mean like 30 degrees or like 35 degrees? Like you know that kind of thing. So but um yeah, but it makes me learn um I faster I think because I get the details. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure it can be a real pain. Just fucking do it. But yeah. But there's nothing wrong with. Because a lot of people would just listen and then just kind of not say anything and not really understand what you're talking about. But if you're questioning stuff that you're questioning in your head, then there's nothing really wrong with that, is there? No, nothing wrong at all. Because you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna understand why you're doing something, you know, it's, it's gonna be a lot better for you. You're gonna pull the move off better. You're gonna be more fluid with the movement, more fluid with the shots. So it, it is a good thing. Like she says, you're pain in the ass, but it is a good thing. I'm curious for you to kind of expand on. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on. Was that Josh Warrington there? No, I don't know why I came on the mic. Just do your impression. <laughs> you forget it. There's a, there's a Leeds fan. Yeah. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. It's great. We've got to work on that one before Saturday. Why is she a pain in the ass? No, I wouldn't say she's a pain in the ass. No, in a nice way. In, in a, a nice, nice way. way. It was just, uh, just, just, just basically she wants to get everything right. She wants to be perfect. She wants to be perfect. Everything she does, she wants everything perfection. And sometimes, because I mean, she's not mine, she's Brian Corwin's fighter. He's he's developed her to this style. I'm trying to say things, and she needs to grasp a bit more than what I'm saying. I'm used to saying, if I say to my boys one thing, they instantly get it because they've been brought up with me. But with Emily, I've had to explain a bit more. And she, she missed the pad a couple of times, I think, on purpose as well. Um, just, to, just to put me in my place. Eh? So what, <laughs> yeah. what one day, Sometimes. she nearly had one back as well. <laughs> nearly what happened? She nearly had one back. It's cracked me flush it's, in the chest. I swear it's an accident. Yeah, it's like, an like, accident. Oh, God, especially, especially the red one when I walked away. <laughs> I actually did it. I did do <laughs> sneaky rib shots. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Can we just get some clarity on this situation? So basically, you missed the pad and hit you where? Flush on a jaw. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I thought, I didn't know I mean, he wanted did, straight did, to the I, body. You missed Wait, the no, pad and hit him flush on a jaw. I, was, I, I thought that he wanted me to go, well, he wanted me to go straight and I thought it was an overhand. Basically, so, I mean, the body back, it was body his problem. So he didn't have the pad there. Yeah, <laughs> so he wouldn't have had there. Straight right down to the body, bang, flush on the chin. So I did have a reaction of going, and I thought better not. It wasn't that flush, because if it was flush, it would have been knocked out. Let's be real. She means that. <laughs> she half means that. She does half she does no, half it wasn't that on, on a pads. We finish the pads. It was more of a throat punch. Yeah, do it. We had a little, <laughs> we had a, we had a little pad session. The pad finish session. I turned away. I think it was the last round. And just, just being Ebony, she thought, whack, whack me in the rib. Fuck it. it. <laughs> Rip the rib up. I'm aggressive. I'm Spiteful aggressive. little bastard, aren't you? I'm just, I'm just a little bit aggressive. Like, I can't help it. I play fight. And maybe my play fight's a bit rough. Okay, um, 
Well, you're right anyway after all that. Yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. I can't. I, can't I think he's me. fucking traumatised, but he's kind of like hiding it. Um, <laughs> we were talking as well um, about something we always talk about with you, but kind of how well you've done marketing yourself. And we were talking about this actually just in the lift here, that that side of boxing has any sensible people know is as important sometimes as what you can do in the ring because you could be the best fighter in the world if no one fucking knows who you are then it's almost pointless yeah 100 percent um and definitely i know how it works i know how marketing works and um didn't need to do a degree for it but um i got it you know like i know that it's um it's all about getting eyes on you and it's all about um being known that's how you get paid you know i know that you get paid by like i mean think about it when you're at a lower level and you got to sell tickets to to your fights, you know, and that's your pay pretty much. Like, if you have fans, you're going to sell a lot of tickets. If you don't, you're not. So that you, you're not going to get paid. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing, but at a bigger scale, and but not having to sell tickets. But it's the same thing, you know, in my sense. And and I just think that I just used what I got, um, you know, everything. So. Yeah. Marketing genius is Ebony. <laughs> Marketing genius. You hit the nail on the head. And I think I mentioned earlier. She, She's on her phone constantly, but she's she's networking, she's working, and she works just as hard in the gym as she does at, at her, not so much her appearance, but her marketability. Um, you know, the, so many people know her through what she does, and they're going to tune in to watch her fight as well. So, you know, absolute genius. Do you feel like over your kind of stint, especially in the UK, that you have people that have kind of possibly questioned yourself as a fighter as a person as a whatever that you've hopefully have kind of transformed people's opinions to maybe a slightly more positive version than the negative yeah definitely I, I think I've definitely um, changed people's opinions um, and turned a lot of um, you know non-believers into believers but there's always going to be haters out there that no matter what they can't see um, they can't see you because that's their, but that's their own thing. You know what I mean? Like they're blind, and some people you just can't open their eyes. Um, but I'm not too fussed, and I'm glad that um, I've had people change their tone towards me. Um, it, it feels good to know that um, I've done, an, I've, you know, not done enough. I, there's always a lot more to show, but that I've done things that people are really respecting. Um, you know, and people know they, they get me by now. Know what it's all about. You know, they know it's entertainment. And they know it's just me having fun and doing what I love. Um, and that I'm here for the fans. And I think that's the biggest thing is that I do things for the fans. Like after my fight on Sunday, I'm doing a meet and greet, you know, the Sunday after my fight, um, because, you know, I want to give back to the fans and I'm going home, you know, and after my fight, like, you know, I haven't slept that night, I'm wrecked. I'm probably going to be wrecked guys. So sorry if I look like trash and I'm like, I'm tired, but I just wanted to do that for the fans, you know, cause I know it will make their day appreciate them. Um, they'll appreciate that. And it's those, those little things that I do, you know, talking to the fans, engaging. It's because I know that it, that means a lot to people, you know. So, yeah, I think that helps. After your impressive win over Beck Connolly at, at Fight Camp, like I said, you're more or less straight away out. Um, talk to me about this week's fight you have at Headingley. I'm actually really excited about this fight because I think Gengeloff, um is a great style for me. I think we're, our, both our styles are going to work really well together. Um, from what I've seen of her, which was obviously the Ellie, Ellie fight, um, you know, she likes she does like to come forward and she's very, very tough. Um, and um, she likes to punch. It looks like she likes to punch on the inside. You know, she doesn't hold. Um, I think Ellie was doing a lot of the holding and pushing, um, but it looked like Engloff wanted to make that space and wanted to punch. Um, so hopefully she wants to do that with me and then we can have some nice, good center ring action. Um, but yeah, if not, then I'll do what I do and yeah, have, have fun my own way. <laughs> Get her out of there. <laughs> Enzo, how much have you seen of Gangloff? Yeah, well, I think it's only one fight, one fight on her, but I think she's the type of fighter that doesn't change. Uh, I think she's got one style, she's got a come forward style. Um, and, you know, I think we, we were working on a lot of things, we were working on a lot of things, we were just waiting for an actual, an actual name to get into specifics. Watch Gangloff, we watched her a couple of times, I watched a couple of times on my own, watched a couple of times together. Uh, she, she makes mistakes, she does good things, but she makes mistakes. I mean, the things that she does, uh, everybody's more than capable of taking advantage of that. Uh, and she will, and she's been working and set towards what she's going to do that night. Uh, and she will pull it off. 
It's an absolutely stacked card in Leeds uh, this weekend, obviously headlined by a very important fight for Josh Warrington against Maurizio Lara, see Connor Ben in action against Granados, Casey Taylor in action, you're in action, I mean Maxi Hughes against Frafon, Hopi Price, yeah, that is a very underrated fight, I completely agree with you on that one. Yeah, he was, I was spoke to Maxi earlier and um, you know, I'm not going to say what the plan is and stuff like that, but you know, with, um, Sa Saffron or Saffron, he, he looked amazing last time out against Tennyson hard to really see how good he was because he just he just caught Tennyson coming in but like I said it, it, it's a it's a stack card Katie Taylor corner Ben last time now looked uh, looked amazing uh, I don't think he I don't think he's going to get that sort of win against Granados who's a tough tough customer and obviously Josh Warrington and I think I think I mentioned earlier if it was one if it was one fight that that lockdown affected them by not having the crowd it was Josh Taylor and Josh Warrington uh, but then on the other side of things, you can't go play into the crowd on Saturday night because Lara, Lara can whack. Um, I remember reading, listening listen to a, a video of uh, Emmanuel Navarrete and he said that Lara is probably the hardest punch you've ever faced sparring or fighting. So we, we know he can punch and Warren knows he can punch. But stack card uh, and everybody can't wait. Live on the zone this Saturday night or if you're one of the fortunate people to have a ticket uh, for Headingley this week, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Just one final question: Have you, did you two ever have a move about? Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, yeah, last time. I was do, the, do the story. I said, look, we do a couple of rounds. I said, um, I said, so, some people want him to wear a head guard just for cuts and stuff like that. And I said, do you want me to wear a head guard? And no, she you said, say, did she's, you want me to? She's, 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 I'll, I'll wear, to. I, I, I'm not going to wear a head guard. She said, you better wear one because I'm going to try and knock you out. Yeah, he didn't want to wear tried. one. I said, wear a fucking head guard because otherwise, like, I'll fucking. Because I'm not going to see him play with you. Like, fucking put a head guard on. Yeah. I don't want him to play. Get through those ropes and ropes, and I'm not fucking around. Like. It was like one of those cartoons where I put, held a hand and she was swinging at me. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I got him about uppercut and he was dribbling. <laughs> Ebony Bridges, Enzo Macaronelli, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Appreciate your time. Uh, it's been insightful as always, as it is with you guys. And uh, yeah, we look forward to it's only Wednesday, so press the tomorrow weigh in, which is going to be interesting. Open to the public, obviously. And yeah, roll on Saturday night. Cheers, cool. Uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, can't wait, guys. Tune in. Can't wait to see the fans there and everyone tuning in. Ha 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 ha!